So our POD question asks us that given an array of integers, we have to check to see if the array is already sorted. Okay, so we have to create a function called is sorted that takes in an array and it will have to return true if array is sorted and return false if not. Okay, focus on clearly explaining your solution once you've solved it iteratively. Try to solve it recursively or using functional programming. If you have time, write and walk through some test cases for your code. What is the time complexity of your solution? Okay, cool. So let's create some test cases then. We can console log the return value of calling our function is sorted with a sorted array. Um, for example, one, three, five, seven, eight. This will return true. And let's say if it wasn't sorted when we compare the first two elements. Let's say it's five, three, five, seven, eight. This will return false. And what if it's only not sorted somewhere in the middle, like let's say here, right here. It would also return false. How about the case where it's only not sorted at the very end, like this? This would also return false. So this would be a rather comprehensive test cases. Oh, you know what? Let's include some negative numbers. Okay, cool. So the high level explanation of what our function would do is that we can compare each element with its next element or each element with its previous element actually. Let's do three minus negative one and see if it's a positive number. If it is, we move on. And we check if five minus three is a positive number. It is, we move on. Seven minus five is two, it's positive, let's move on. Eight minus seven is also positive, let's move, let's move on. So as long as all of these differences are actually all positive, then we return true. Otherwise, we have to return false if any of these differences are negative. For example, three minus five, that's negative two we should just immediately return false by then. Okay, cool. So let's create a for loop and let's check from mm, the first, I mean the second element, to the last element. And let's see if the difference between our current element and our previous element is bigger than zero. If it is, we do nothing if it's not, then we should return false immediately. So once we've run through the entire for loop, if we haven't returned false, that means all of the differences are bigger than zero. Then by then we, we should return true. Okay, let's see. True, true, false, false. Oh, oh no. Why is this true? Let's see. Let me do some console logging. Let's console log what our current element is and also our previous element. Let me just check for the la last test case where it was failing. Oh, of course it's not gonna print anything. Um, I'm curious how come it didn't check for the last element minus, oh, it's because we didn't even go to the very last element. We should have put an equal sign here. It was only going until 11. I think this was why. There we go. Okay, now that we have our working solution for uh, is sorted, using a for loop, we can move on to solve it recursively. Okay, let me comment this out and start doing the recursive solution. Okay, so what is the base case? The base case would be 
when we reach array dot length minus one as our current element um, as our current elements index. Um, then we can start from index is zero, and then we slowly increment the index until we reach the base case. So base case would be when index is equal to array dot length minus one. And when we reach the base case, we have to return let's do um let's let's do an accumulator value which is a boolean value so this is sort of like reduce so let's initialize our accumulator to true and if at any case where our current value minus our where our current value minus our previous value gives out a negative number we set accumulator to false so that it will slowly carry through the recursive calls until we're returning uh, accumulator, which would have been false in this case, for example. And then we have to check if our current um, if our current value minus our previous value gives out a negative number, then we have to set our accumulator to false. Otherwise, it stays as true, and we just need to return accumulator and our next recursive call, which has the same array, but an incremented index and our accumulator. All right, let's put our base case in. Okay, let's see. Oh no, they all return true. I wonder why it never got, oh, oops, that is my mistake. We have to minus the previous value from the current value. I was, my, I was, I was, I was finding the difference of its own value and its own value, which would have always been zero and not negative. Anyways, let's see. So we go from true, true, false, false to true. True, true, false, false, false. So we're missing the last element again. Oh, it's because we have to check for when index is array.length. So let's take that away. This, this works. Okay. Um, I think I can do one with reduce because this just looks freakishly similar to reduce. So let me let me find a solution using reduce. Okay. So we have to reduce on our array and we have a accumulator value and a current value as its parameter. And inside this reduce function, we can initialize accumulator to, to true. And if in any case, the current value, oh, hmm, how do we get the previous value? Mm. Let me create a previous value so that at the end of every reduce call, we update the previous value to the current current value. All right, so now if current value minus the previous value is negative, then our accumulator is false. Otherwise, accumulator stays as true, and we have to return accumulator so that the Boolean value gets uh, returned to be the accumulator value in our next iteration. OK. Um, and once all this is done, we have to return the return value of this, which would, which would be the accumulator value, the final accumulator value. OK, got it. I'm not exactly sure what functional programming is, but I think these are the three solutions that I can come up with. So this is it, um, for loop, recursion, and reduce.